Hello everybody, RBY here, and welcome to Sid Meier's Civilization V Gods and Kings Expansion Pack. So if you guys have never watched my first ever, first ever video on my channel, I had discussed that this would be one of the games that I would be playing. Of course, without the Gods and Kings Expansion Pack, because I didn't have it at the time. So basically, in this episode, it's not going to be my official LP. It's going to be a, um, just kind of showing you the game. The, basically just the stuff in the game. Oh, whoops. Hopefully that was... Okay, so I'm the Persian the Empire, and I'm just going to be quiet so you can hear this. You lead a strong and wise people. In the morning of the world, the great Persian leader Cyrus revolted against the mighty Median Empire, and by 550 BC, the Medes were no more. Through cunning diplomacy and military prowess, great Cyrus conquered wealthy Lydia and powerful Babylon, his son conquering proud Egypt some years later. Over time, Persian might expanded into faraway Macedonia on the very door of the upstart Greek city-states. Long would Persia prosper until the upstart villain Alexander of Macedon destroyed the great empire in one shocking campaign. Darius, your people look to you to once Okay, so this is basically just saying your people have looked up to you and stuff like that. The Will you do it? Of your ancestors must emerge in okay, so I'm just gonna skip that. Excuse me. Okay, I've... Wait a second. Okay, I hope... Ugh. This is a... Stop it. Stop it. What are these? Truffles? Okay, I have personally never see these, have never seen these in my life, and they look amazing. Like, amazing. I want them. Sadly, this is not a LP, so I can't keep these. So the first thing you do is use your settler to found a city, and this is your warrior, and he is basically your combative unit. Oh wow! Okay. Here is something that may be helpful. Okay, so there were three things that I was going to show you later in the episode, all in one turn. So the Beringer Crater is considered a natural wonder, and the natural wonder, basically, whenever you see, it'll automatically increase your happiness, which I will explain what that is later, and. If I have my city's borders, if they have the Beringer Crater, I will get two extra gold and three extra science, which again, I will explain what these two things are in the later, in later, in the episode. Thank you. And this is an ancient ruin, and an ancient ruin is basically, um, just this abandoned structure that is randomly spawned throughout the map and when you move your guys onto that tile it'll give you a certain buff like um it'll give you culture which i will explain later gold which i will also explain later um it'll let you research a new science a free science which i will also explain later it could give you a citizen which i will explain later basically it'll give you everything that i will explain later and it can just upgrade your unit to be better so I'm gonna just stop it. The city school. Stop. Okay. So I'm just gonna discuss um the city thing. So this thing you can buy tiles with gold, and you get gold from your cities, citizens, um stuff that you have, um like uh, in your borders, um all that stuff. Um the citizen will um it requires food. And food is basically given by the natural terrain that you spawn on. Like, um, this gives me four food just from the terrain right here. And it, um, two of it is already eaten by my citizens, so I have two food left over. And basically food will allow your citizens to have babies, which will increase your population. Food will also, um, um, keep them happy which I'll explain happiness later. And, um, border growth is basically where this thing gains an extra tile, which are these weird, um, I think that's a hexagon. 
these weird hexagonal things, you can buy one of these hexagonal things. Like, if I buy this one, I'll get the truffle, which I'm pretty sure is a pig. If I buy this one, I'll get marble. Yeah. So there's that. A production. Stop it. And also, the happier your citizens are, the faster they will construct these units, buildings, and eventually special, um, buildings, nat- or, uh, what do you call it? I don't know, I'll figure it out. But, um, so basically, the more production you have, the less turns this will take to build. And I'm going to build this first, which will give me two extra culture when it's done. And basically, the happier your citizens are, the faster they'll work. Which is right here, so for production. So that means, I don't, I don't, I'm not exactly sure how they math this out, but for production equals 10 turns for this thing, somehow, I don't know. I'm, I'm not exactly sure how. Um, and then science, stop. Then, um, science will basically allow you, when you research it, to build new things. Like, if you research pottery, you'll be able to build a shrine and a granary. If you research Hannibal Husbandry, you can use workers to construct a pasture, or it, it, it will also reveal the horses on the map. Archery will give you the archer, and mining will allow you to chop down a forest and construct a mine with your worker. I'm going to get pottery, because the shrine will get you faith, which I will explain later in, the, in this episode. Okay, so next turn. <clears throat> and they also do this cool music. Like this music, this is actual Persian music. Like this is what the Persians would listen to. Ancient ruins. Let's just stop it. Okay, so basically your warrior, these blue, this is where he can move in a single turn. Then you have to wait till the next turn to move, which I can actually get the ruins. Oh, night a map. How many? Wait a second. Wait, a barbarian? Okay, there's a barbarian camp, which I'll explain. And two ruins. Okay, that's good. And I, I will explain what a barbarian is once I am able to see them. Actually, I can explain gold while I'm doing that, while I'm reaching him. Gold is basically um what you use maintenance on. Okay, and there's the barbarian. But maintenance is like, when you finish the shrine, it costs one gold per turn to manage that building. And if you don't have enough, um, eventually you actually have to start, it'll, the game will sell your units to get money. Um, and then, oh, barbarians. So barbarians are basically the enemy NPC. Of course, you can go to war with the other civilizations, which I'll explain later. But the barbarians will attack anything. Your civ, city-states, which I'll explain later, other civs, your civ, basically anything that's not their own. And they'll capture workers and settlers and basically enslave them. So yeah. yeah thank you. Oh, stop it. I hate these advisors. It's like you can't disable them. Or you maybe you can, I can't figure out how to though. And it's really annoying. Like, I know how to play this. Stop it! Okay, I'm going to attack these guys. It's gonna be a minor defeat, and I don't care, and this guy's probably gonna be a butt about it. Yep. Shut up! Oh my gosh, the these advisors are so stupid. Actually, they're pretty smart, but... They're, they're stupid and thinking I don't know how to play this game. Okay, so I'm basically- oh, and if you didn't see me attack that guy, that's basically how all these battles go. It'll actually show the attack. I have some information that may be- No, it's not useful. It's dumb. Next turn. Now, usually these things will spawn another barbarian. They will both try to attack me. If I'm if I'm right. No? They usually do. 
And I'm just gonna heal instantly so I can actually attack these guys again. Keep attacking. I wanna show you what happens when you, um, basically just, when you kill the barbarian and get into their encampment. I wanna show you what happens before I, um, before I skip forward to the next topic. Stupids, you can't attack a single bar. Okay, and that get, just gave me 40 gold for destroying their encampment. Which isn't a terribly good reward, but eh, it's okay. Okay, so I'm going to, um, like, just skip forward until I reach another important topic. And so, yeah. Roll the next footage. Okay. I'm back. Shall the clay so basically, um, I've just finished researching pottery with my science, and that will allow me to build a shrine and a granary. And every time you research something, it'll give you a famous quote from something. Like this is from the Bible, from the book of Isaiah in the Bible, 45:9, and I guess it says, "Shall the clay say to him that fashion that what makest thou?" And I'm not sure if that means anything special, but they have many people that say this. Like I believe Albert Einstein says some. I'm not. I'm not sure, but I think I think um, Thomas Edison says one. Tons of people do. Um, Benjamin. I'm pretty sure Benjamin Franklin says something. Um, they have quite a few other co quotes from the Bible. Just quite a few different quotes from different people. So now I can make a shrine and. Did I finish the money? No, I didn't. Next turn. So I'm not gonna just skip. Um, I'm just gonna research that. Um, let's see what I get from this. I have some info. Stop. Okay. So I just got a, a citizen, an extra citizen. So that has three citizens. And on that note, I'm actually gonna discuss um the golden ages and the happiness. Happiness is basically um, how your citizens are feeling, and happiness can be from different things, like almost every person is a little bit unhappy, no matter what, um, and like you get happiness, I get 12 happiness just because it's 12 difficulty level, um, actually what difficulty level am I on, wait stop, give me a second, I wanna see, I'm on, Chief, it's not that hard. Standard, standard, fresh. I don't know what that means. But happiness, it'll make them produce things faster. Um, and if your happiness gets below negative 30 happiness, there will actually be rebels that will attack your city. I've had it happen once. Because I couldn't figure out how to counter the unhappiness. My citizens were just so unhappy. So I'm going to get... Oh, and this is a golden age. And every time your citizens are happy, so... Give me a second. Let me wait for this to end. Okay. Our capitals. I hate when they do that. So, um... I get 10 golden age points because of my happiness. And once I get 500... It will produce a golden age, which will basically buff everything that I have. Like, it'll let, help me get culture faster. It'll um, make my guys super happy. Um, it'll buff my gold. It'll buff my science. It'll buff my faith, I think. I'm not sure. But it'll basically just buff everything. And I'm going to research the shrine, so I'll be able to explain faith later in the episode. And is that all I want? No, because next turn I'm going to be able to get enough culture for, um, uh, to research, uh, I don't know. Uh, what do you call them? A policy. Ooh, who's that? A rape. Marhaban, ayyuha al-ajami. Ana Harun al-Rashid, Khalifa al-Arab. Halumma ilayya wa haddithni an imperatoriyyatik. Okay, so this is one of the um, other civilizations, and this is the Arabian civilization. 
And I'm not exactly sure... I'm gonna have to wait until I see their city, because I can't really... Oh, wait, I can do things. So I can just flat out declare war on him and attack him. I can trade with him, which is basically... I'll ch he'll tr He doesn't have a lot of... He, man, he doesn't have a lot of gold compared to me. But, like, I can give him... He can give me 55 gold, and I might give him pigs if I actually had the pigs at the moment. And he probably won't do it because the NPCs are really stupid. And I can also, um, I can make peace with him. I can declare war on someone else. No, no, I meant this. Luxury, no. Um, accept embassy. And that basically just allows your guys to see each other players, um, capital. Open borders, um, it'll allow us to pass through one's territory. Defensive pack will basically say, if, um, like, if, say, I'm attacked, this guy will help me by attacking the other person. Research agreement, that'll basically, we both pay $200, and, um, it'll immediate, no, 150 and it'll buff our science for, um, I don't even know, I don't know how long. In cities. Oh, that's basically where you say you trade cities. So yeah, I'm never gonna trade a city. And I can just demand, like, say, give me 55 gold, but if he doesn't like that, he will, he will actually not like you. He'll be unhappy, because right now he's neutral, and he may eventually be super unhappy. Or I can discuss and we can declare war on someone else. I can pub publicly denounce him, which is basically just saying, "Hey, everybody, don't trust this guy. He's stupid," and it actually it makes him angry. We can make a joint a, a declaration of friendship, which will basically say we're friends and we can't attack each other for 30 turns and stuff. Don't settle near cities. That's basically just saying, don't be near us, and again, that'll make him angry. So that's basically the civilization stuff, and maybe we'll run into a city like his city later. Okay. So now I can explain adopting policies. So basically, this is a policy. Thank you. Stop it. Policies, um. Basically, they'll buff things. Like, tradition will buff, um, culture. Liberty will buff border expansion and culture. Honor, military. Piety, culture. Um, patronage, influence uh, between city-states, which I will explain later. Order, that's basically everything. Um, autocracy, fascism. I just read faces on mm. mm. But autocracy will buff... It looks like gold. Um, freedom buff great people, which I'm not sure I follow explain that at all. That's not very important. Um, rationalism will buff science, and commerce will buff gold and trading. So I'm going to just adopt liberty, because I like border growth. sure I just adopted that, right? Give me a sec. I th think it's lagging. Um, where is it? Policies. Yes, it's just lagging. So now, when once I get 20 more um, culture, I can adopt one of, one of these two policies. Or I can adopt tradition or honor. So that's the, um, uh, what do you call it? Culture. Stuff. So I'm going to, um, again, skip this until I reach something. So, see you guys later. Okay guys, I'm back. So it's been a few turns, and I have now found the capital of Arabia, which is Mecca, Mika, I'm not exactly sure. But um, there's their capital and their borders. And also, another thing that happened was I got a worker. And the workers right now are building farms. And building a farm, like building a farm here, will give me three extra food. No, does it? 
Yes, it does. And this will give me three, two food and one gold, I'm pretty sure. So, um, basically, yeah, that's what the workers do. And they can also, like here, they'll construct a quarry. They can construct a, tr um, like a, a camp, a pasture, a mine, a trading post, uh, like a plantation. Um, plantation, plantation. I think that's all. Oh, and then wheat fields. So that's basically what workers do. So, um, see you guys. Okay guys, I'm back. And I've just found a city-state, and this is Manila. And if you didn't hear that music, it's because it's a maritime city-state, which basically means just ships and stuff. So, um, this guy, they give me 15 gold just because I found them. And they have s the silk resources. They're actually hostile. Um. So, they're more hostile. Um. And I'm pretty sure I can. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can do certain things with them. Um, India announced that it will protect Malina. Okay, so now I can... Okay, that's amazing music. Um, I could spend gold, and give them gold, and that'll make them happier. Pledge to protect. Um... So... And that will basically say, if you attack, if a Civ attacks Manila, we will attack them. Ask for tribute, um... I believe that, oh yeah, that basically says, hey, give us gold, or give us a unit, or we will destroy you. And that will decrease their happiness, um, or, or I can just declare war on them. And actually, I, f I found another, um natural wonder, which is Mount Kaili Kailash, and a bunch of people said, <laughs> all the sibs I've met said they're going to um, protect, and I've met, now I've met Egypt, Arabia, and India, Gandhi, Haru al-Rashid, and Ramses the, Ramses the third. So, yeah, I hope you got, no, <laughs> I hope no, I only have one more thing to show you, actually, which is the faith. So, um, see you guys when I get my faith. Okay, guys, so I haven't gotten faith yet, but this guy is ask actually asking for a trade. He's basically saying, hey, will you show me your capital, and I'll give you 25 gold. Oh, no. Um, can I, like, edit this? Yeah, and I'll accept that because it doesn't really matter if he knows where my capital is. Okay, so see ya when I get faith. Okay, yes, I have finally gotten 15 faith, which will allow me to found a pantheon, and this will basically buff up something. It'll buff whatever you choose. And I will choose religious settlements because I personally like having my borders growing super fast. So I'm going to pick that. Now I have founded a pantheon. So I am now finished with this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And again, this is not, I'm not going to probably ever play on this map again because this is not. This is just kind of showing you the basics, so you will probably never see this thing again, but, um, so, hope you guys enjoyed this, I hope it helped you out. If you did enjoy, a like is always appreciated, um, if, like, you have something 
is some information that I could use to my advantage. Comment. Wow. Cool. It's amazing. What do I need for? Great profit. Wow. That was impressive. Anywho, um, subscribe, um, that helps my channel out a lot. RBY, signing out.